Well, let's take a look at other effective uh, sampling methods. Now for um, some definitions, uh, we have a frame. This is a list of all the individuals within the population. Sometimes it's uh, important to understand uh, what, is your, what does your population consist of so you can understand how to create a sample or, or so forth. Uh, for example, if you got a list of all your uh, voting, voting citizens in a state, well, you'll know how many Democrats, how many Republicans, and how many um, independents you might have. So that might help you to uh, frame up how much, what kind of sampling should you do, and how much you should take of each one. Now we have a stratified sample. This is obtained by separating the population into non-overlapping groups called strata, and then obtaining a simple random sample from each stratum. The individuals within each stratum should be homogeneous or similar in some way. Um, and you need a frame to understand this. And this is like a, the example I just gave, where you have Democrats, Republicans, and Independent. Um, you want to make sure that you hear from all three groups. But if your state, for example, is mostly Republicans, it could be that if you take a normal random sample, you'll end up with all Republicans. So you get no idea of what Democrats and Independent are, are saying. Now there's a systematic sample that's obtained by selecting every kth individual from the population. The first individual selected corresponds to a random number between 1 and k, and this doesn't require a frame. Sometimes this doesn't work very well though. You almost have to know how many you're going to be dealing with before you begin this. Uh, for example, if I decide I'm going to go stand outside of um, uh, Walmart, and uh, starting with the third person, I'm going to talk to every fifth person that comes out. Well, um, and I'm going to get 20 people total. Well, by the time that uh, f half an hour has gone by, I I've reached my 20. So I'm not getting any kind of representation on what the rest of people believe the rest of the day. You know, the people get out early are the ones the only opinion I get. Um, could be that I stand outside of a store and decide I'm going to talk to every 50th person. Well, maybe they only get five customers the entire day. They don't get a very good sample at all. You get maybe one person. Now, steps in systematic sampling. If possible, approximate population size, and that's our capital N. Determine a sample size desired, uh, little n. Compute n divided, capital N divided by little n, and round down to the nearest integer. Now, round down means no matter what, you go down. Um, for example, if I had uh, 3.12, we'd go down to 3. If I had 3.98, we'd go down to 3. Round down means you always go down, no matter what. Uh, randomly select a number between 1 and k. I call this number p. So that's our starting place, like where I talked to the third per starting with the third person. And then the sample will consist of the following individuals. p, p plus k, p plus 2k, on, on our way up, p plus n minus 1 times k. Now our cluster sample. This is obtained by selecting all individuals within a randomly selected collection or group of individuals. Don't need a complete frame, just a frame, frame of the groupings. Um, cluster obtained by, select by, is obtained by selecting all individuals within a randomly selected collection or groups of individuals. Well, maybe I go by high school. Uh, maybe there's 10 high schools. And they're, they're already um, broke into clusters by what high school they're in. And um, then I randomly see it's, it's obtained by selecting all individuals within a randomly selected collection. So I got 10 high schools and I randomly select three of them. Now after I've selected those three then I sample everybody in those schools. That's what that's saying. A convenience sample. This is a sample in which the individuals are easily obtained in which the individuals are easily obtained. Um, radio programs often this way. People call in with their opinion. And now convenience sample isn't, uh, isn't the best. It's easy. Because um, you get people that are very opinionated calling in, uh, one way or the other. Doesn't really represent the, the general population. Uh, the most popular type of convenience sample is a self-selected. Individuals themselves decide to participate. Voluntary response samples. Now let me, um, let me end this. Okay, the instructor walks in the classroom and asks the students whether they are for or against making marijuana legal. Okay, so come up here. Stratified sample. Um, 
Well, I don't really break the population non-overlapping groups because I'm, we're assuming the population is um, like all students. Systematic, I'm not talking like every fifth person. Cluster is obtained by selecting all individuals within randomly selected collection or group of individuals. Uh, don't need a com complete frame to frame the groupings. No, that didn't seem to work. Uh, convenience. Sample which the individuals are easily obtained. This is convenient, isn't it? Uh, walk into the classroom and, um, well, you got students right there. You don't have to do any kind of effort to try to collect a sample. Uh, just ask them. Okay. The instructor randomly picks the number seven and randomly picks number five. He then takes a sample of students coming out of the library, starting with the seventh, seventh student and every fifth one after that. Definitely not stratified. We're not breaking into groups. Uh, systematic sample. It's obtained by selecting every kth individual from the population. And then uh, the first one selected is a random number. So that is actually the um, systematic. So this one's systematic. Okay, administration randomly picks three classrooms during the 8 o'clock slot on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday and surveyed everyone in those classrooms. Now, so at 8 o'clock, everybody's in a particular classroom. So already it's, it's divided up into like maybe 20 classrooms, for example. Uh, then randomly picks three and it surveys everyone in those classrooms. Okay. Now here's where you split them into groups and then you randomly sample from within each group. That doesn't fit. Definitely not systematic. Cluster. Attained by selecting all individuals within a randomly selected collection or group of individuals. That's a cluster. You know, all the all the classrooms are, that's what splits them up. And then they're randomly picking certain classrooms and then talking to everybody in those classrooms. So that's a cluster. Okay. Administration splits a group students at a college into two groups, men and women, and randomly picks from within each group. Okay, that's where they're actually splitting them into two groups and randomly picking from within each group. So stratified, splitting them into groups and randomly picking within those groups. So that's a stratified sample. Hmm. It'd be nice if I had those in some kind of chart or something like that, but oh well. Um, an instructor randomly picks 40 students from everyone on campus, see if they think the government captured a space alien in Cali County. Okay, randomly picks 40 students from everyone on campus. So we're not breaking them into groups, like stratified. Um, we're, it's not broken into logical groups by, by cluster. It's not systematic. Uh, it's not convenience. Uh, this is actually just a random sampling. This is done correctly. Randomly picks 40 students from everyone on campus. And, uh, of course, population, the assumption is the all, all students um, on campus. Now, it could be extended, say, all students um, uh, across the United States, except for most people don't know where Cali County is um, in other states or maybe even in this state. Okay, why did I come up with this? Let me uh, blow this up. I was Googling. I, I try to find interesting things to show um, in statistics. And I, I don't. I was googling UFO, and I don't even think I put in Cali or anything. And I, I found this, and it was an interesting uh, video to watch. Uh, they hauled this uh, transport uh, through um, Winfield, and the sheriff was kind of really um, mysterious about it. And um, <laughs> and then, then the, of course, here it is: UFO news, secret UFO transport in Cali County. Um. Now here I'll go ahead and, and tell what this is. Um, it's a systematic sample. And um, let me come over here. It says there are a total of 3,300 individuals in a town. That's our capital M. And a company wishes to conduct a systematic sample. Determine K if the sample size is 70. So little n is 70. And they want us to find K. So let me go back up here to our formula. Assuming I could find it. Uh, there it is. You see step three. It says compute um, N divided by N and 
capital N divided by little n and round down to the nearest integer. This value is k. So k is going to be 3300 divided by 70. So I've got 3300 divided by 70. Enter. And we get 47.14. And now it says uh, round down to the nearest integer. So this will go down to 47. And that would be our k. Okay. Another example. A survey is to be conducted at a company. Um, scroll down a little bit. Uh, can the, the company has 4,000 employees want to conduct a systematic sample of size 35 to determine how many think the CEO is an alien. Okay, so our capital N is 4,000. The sample size, they want to be 35. And step, or part A, um, then to determine how, determine how many think the CEO is an alien. So what is K? Well, remember K is equal to capital N over little n. So we're going to have 4,000 over 35. So let's see what that is. 4,000 divided by 35. And we get 114. Remember, no matter what the decimal place is, we always round down. So we go down to that. Okay. Then it says... Suppose a three is randomly picked. Then the individual in your population will be. So our first one, uh, since three is randomly picked, first one's a third person we talk to. Then the next one, we'll take the previous value plus 114. Well, that gives us uh, 117. And then we take our, for the next one, I won't continue that, but we'll take our um, previous value plus, and we keep adding 114. And um, 11, 3, 231, if I add it correctly. It's always kind of doubtful. Why am I having so much trouble with that? Uh, let's see, 2731, yeah, 231. Okay, now our last one. And this is given by a formula. If I scroll up here. See, this is P, P plus K, uh, P plus 2K. So we just keep adding K over and over. This last one is going to be P plus N minus 1 times K. Okay. So let's use that to figure out what this should be. Now, P is our starting value. So this one's P. So we're going to have 3 plus little n is 35. So we've got 35 minus 1 times k, which is uh, 114. So we got 34 times 114. So let's see what we get here. 3 plus 34 times 114. And we get 3879. And that would be the answers to that um, problem. Now our last one. Um, again, I got stuck on aliens here. Um, I, d I just found it funny how the sheriff was kind of very mysterious about the the the, the UFO they uh, traveled through town. Uh, they came out and said it was a naval aircraft. Um, but then again, if they were trying to cover it up, then they probably would say something like that. Um, so, interesting going ons um, in uh, small towns. <laughs> anyway, that's the end of that uh, lecture. So let me bring up the recorder and we'll stop it. And we'll stop this one.